Hi, this is our last video, and today's video is going to be on the law of sines. Good news is, I think the law of sines is easier than the law of cosines. Now, law of sines, just like the law of cosines, is we're going to use it if we don't have a right angle. The key to all law of sines and law of cosines is we're only going to use this if we don't have a right angle. If we have a right angle, we've got Pythagorean theorem, we've got sine, we've got cosine, we've got tangent. We have all that right triangle trig. So, but we're only going to use the law of sines if I have angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, or side, side, angle, the booty theorem. So if I have those three cases, it's the law of sines, and we talked about the two cases that we used the law of cosines yesterday. So the law of sines is all about proportions, which we did a lot of in our similarity unit. So we, law of sines, so we're going to use sine, obviously. Now it's the sine of angle A over side A the sine of angle B over side B, and the sine of angle C over side C. Remember, we said proportions and setting up all these ratios for similarity is all about a pattern. So notice the pattern is the sine of the angle over the side of the angle, the sine of B over the side of B, sine of C over the side of C. So the angles are going on top, the sides are going on the bottom. You're just going to follow that pattern every single time. All right, so we have only one example again today. So we want to solve our triangle, and we discussed yesterday that if it says to solve the triangle, that means we're solving for all six pieces. You will always be given three of the six, so you're going to be solving for the missing three. We draw a generic triangle. That doesn't mean it's going to be equilateral like it looks. We're just going to draw so we can fill our information in. So we've got triangle ABC. We are given angle B is 45 degrees, angle C is 120, and side B. So if here's B, side B is a cross, which is going to be 10. Remember, the capital letters are representing the angles, the lowercase are representing the sides. So when I look here, angle, angle, side. This is the angle, angle, side situation. All right, so our six pieces. We have three sides, A, B, and C. We have three angles, angle A, angle B, and angle C. Based on we were given, we were given angle B is 45 degrees. We were given angle C is 120, and angle B is 10. We want to solve for those three missing pieces, side A, side C, and angle A. Good news is we are starting off crazy easy. When I look at this setup, I have two of my three angles, so to solve for my missing angle A, we know all three angles have to add up to 180, so 180 minus 45 minus 120, I subtract those and I get that my missing angle is 15 degrees. Can't get any easier than that. So our first missing piece of information, angle A is 15 degrees. Now of course the rest of it's not going to be that easy. We need to solve for side A, side C. Doesn't matter which one we do first, let's just go with A. So if I'm solving for side A, that means I have to use my ratio involving A. So sine of angle A over side A. Now I have to decide what other piece am I going to use. When you're looking at the given information, you need to have all of one. So I need the side and the angle of A, or the side and angle of B, or the side and angle of C. You need to have one complete ratio. And remember, ratio is just your fraction, so you need to have all of this, all of this, or all of that. You need to have one complete ratio in order to solve. In this case, I was given both the angle and the side of angle B. So that's what I'm going to use to solve. So we have the sine of angle A, so the sine of 15 degrees is over that unknown side A. The sine of angle B, well angle B is 45 over side B, which is 10. We have a proportion here, two ratios set equal, so to solve we are going to cross multiply. So this becomes 10 times the sine of 15 degrees is equal to A times the sine of 45 degrees. 
Remember, we want to solve for a. This is a time sign. So to get a by itself, I want to move that sine of 45. So the opposite operation is going to be division. That leaves us with a is equal to 10 times the sine of 15 divided by the sine of 45. We need to have our calculators out. We want to make sure that we can enter this in. Move this over. So we see our calculator here. We want to enter in this information here. So I have 10 times the sine of 15, really important. One, our calculator should already be in degree mode. Two, you need to close out that 15. I'm taking sine of just that angle 15. You have to close out those parentheses. If not, everything's going to be wrong. Divided by the sine of 45. So I need to enter that in. We hit enter and we get that a is going to be about 3.66.0. That means that we are going to round to 3.7. We're going to go ahead and fill that in. Our side A is 3.7, which means now we only have one piece of information left, and that is our side C. When we go to write this out, I'm still going to use sine of B over side B because that was the ratio I was given. Always use given values if possible because if you had made a mistake in A, you would just be magnifying that mistake in C. So always use the numbers given when at all possible. So now I want to solve for that missing side C, so I'm going to use the sine of C over the side of C. So angle B is 45, side B is 10, angle C is 120, and side C is our unknown. That's what we're solving for. We cross multiply. C times the sine of 45 degrees is equal to 10 times the sine of 120 degrees. I want to get C by itself. Right now it's C times sine of 45. So to move it, the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're dividing. So C is equal to 10 times the sine of 120 all over the sine of 45. So again, we're going to go back to our calculator. We need to enter this information in here. So we have 10 times the sine of 120. Make sure you close those parentheses out. Very, 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 very important because we're taking the sine of 120 and then we're dividing that by the sine of 45. Oops, what did we do? Oh, we don't have the sine on the bottom. So hit sine of 45. So double check, 10 times the sine of 120 divided by the sine of 45. Rounding to the nearest tenth, we see here we got 12.24. So that 2, the 4, means that it's going to stay as 12.2. Which is going to finish out our triangle for us. That last missing side is going to be 12.2. All right, that is it for the law of sines. Hopefully you found that to be slightly easier than your law of cosines. It's all about those proportions, making sure that you're following those patterns. And that is it for this video.